This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. A 26-year-old man is the country's latest murder victim this Independence holiday. He was gunned down just moments ago outside the Sioux Kitchen and Restaurant on Alexander Boulevard in Nassau Village. Scores of police officers combed the area searching for clues, while onlookers and relatives stood around in awe seeking answers. Head of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Paul Roll, gave ZNS News an update on their investigation. The old male went to the pharmacy here on Alexander Boulevard to collect his mother uh, while waiting for her he went next door to the restaurant to get some food while on the inside of the restaurant there were a group of males on the inside we're not certain as to what may have happened on the inside at this point but the victim left and walked to his vehicle that was parked just uh, outside of the restaurant when the group of males that were in the restaurant followed him to the exterior where we uh, believe that at least two of those men produced handguns and began discharging shots in his direction. While police have no motive into this latest homicide, they're asking the public with any information they may have to come forward to help them solve this case. With the Bahamas facing a possible credit ratings downgrade after the multi-billion dollar Bahama Resort filed for bankruptcy nearly two weeks ago, managing partner of HLB Galanis and co. Philip Galanis says government can learn several lessons. Key among them is being cautious with the size of investments that are allowed in the country as consequences can be dire if they fail. Life terms. What the impact of a setback, much less a failure, of that kind of property could have to our, on our economy. And I think governments going forward should really very seriously consider providing that any large mega resort ought to be scaled down to a much more, much more manageable size. Secondly, I think that even if governments allow, if they don't take that, kind, if they don't take that advice and they decide that they're going to allow mega resorts or mega investments in this country, they ought to phase it in. And I think we got to learn a very good lesson with Atlantis. Galanis, who was addressing the Rotary Club of West Nassau, says he does not believe Crown land should be sold or conveyed. Crown land is, is vital to the development, the future development of our, of our, of our children and our grandchildren. The time's going to come when our grandchildren are not going to be able to afford anything on, on, on West Bay Street. You know why? Because the property has been conveyed to Bahama. As a result of that, you see all kinds of investments being, uh, speculative investments being uh, de developing on West Bay Street. And that's fine. That's good for the economy. But what that is doing is driving the, price, the, driving the price up. And when you convey the land, you can't get it back. And the problem with that is that you, you really uh, deprive yourself of an annuity that you can get on an annual basis for the lease of that land. In a matter of weeks, Clico policyholders should expect to receive some form of compensation after the insurance company went out of business several years ago. In an interview with ZNS News Today, spokesperson for the group Bishop Simeon Hall says he remains optimistic that an amicable resolution will be met after government came to the assistance of Bahamar employees. LaDon Davis reports. It was nearly seven years ago when 14,000 Clico policyholders here in the Bahamas were financially disadvantaged after the company went into liquidation. Spokesperson and policyholder Bishop Simeon Hall says he met with the nation's leader, Prime Minister Perry Christie, almost three weeks ago and is optimistic that a resolution is within reach. I have been making this pr public uh, pronouncement on Clico because I, I'm intent on holding Mr. Christie to what he promised us and uh, so if he were if they were to keep their pro promise as I believe they will then I believe the, the uh, policy holders will be happy in a, uh, for the announcement and how they're moving forward within a couple of weeks and while he could not put a figure as to how much money is owed, Bishop Hall says it is in the millions, and he believes that both governments are to be held accountable for such an inconvenience. Policies should be put in place so that foreign entities
cannot insult the integrity of Bahamians and their government. And so, you know, we have to be more... Somebody fell asleep at the wheel when Clico was happening. But while Clico policyholders are still waiting for a resolution, Bishop Hall is standing behind the government for its quick action and intend to pay out $7.5 million to assist Bahama employees. In the Bahama, the government had some money put away for this kind of thing. So that it was easy for them to access it. In the case of Clico, there was no such money the government had put away. And so my my concern is the 2,000 Bahamians workers who are uncertain whether the sun will come out tomorrow. To work in an environment like that is depressing. LaDon Davis, ZNS Network News. Thanks so much, LaDon. The findings are in on a recent oil leak at the Ruba Sandy Port service station. Following an inspection at the site, a leak was found at the dispenser closest to the boat fueling dock. According to a statement released by Environment Minister Kendra Dorsett, the dispenser has since been deactivated and remains inoperable. The concern came after an oily sheen was witnessed on the water at the dock near the site. The report concluded that both the gasoline and diesel pipelines leading from the dispenser to the various inland tanks be replaced by double-walled pipelines. Minister Dorsett said government is committed to the establishment of the Department of Environmental Planning and Protection and the regulation of the downstream patrol industry. The public, he added, will be updated as this matter progresses. It is a symbol of Bahamian sovereignty and has been that way since the Bahamas became an independent nation 42 years ago. Whether flying full at half-mask or alongside others, the Bahamian flag stands tall in its representation of freedom and democracy. But how much do you really know about the meaning of our flag and its colors? Al Kala Palmer sat down with the designer in this exclusive report. Pride and privilege is how the Reverend Dr. Hervis Bain considers his contribution to designing the Bahamian flag. For years, we've seen the varied shades of blue on the Bahamian flag, a common error for the most part by manufacturers that's highlighted and noted as unacceptable primarily during special occasions like independence. In fact, it's a major turnoff to the flag's designer. Dr. Bain doesn't take kindly to the callous disregard. I go to them and tell them, I've already gone to the authorities and say, listen, this color doesn't work. So just as a reminder, exactly what are the colors of the Bahamian flag? Aquamarine, black and gold. For years as Bahamians, that's exactly what we've been taught. And perhaps while not wrong, Dr. Bain claims that was not his initial design as one of the colors is off. Back in my design, I used a green. I didn't bother using aquamarine. But they use an aquamarine because somebody had an emotional feeling about, about the fly. And I told them it don't work that way. Well, I was just a little fella. So but what it, was the color of the fly supposed to be? What? Green. The, the aquamarine supposed to just be a green. And so with that being the case, just what was the green supposed to represent? I saw the green as being... Uh, the fertility, you know, of the land. The yellow is always with us. What that represent? It, it represent yeah the sunshine, the brightness, the 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 wealth of the above the waters. Mm -hmm. And the majority of Bahamians would be surprised to learn that while what most of them had previously learned in primary school about the meaning of the black in the flag, this too is interpreted differently by Dr. Bain. As you, as you look at the coloring, the coloring cannot exist alone by itself. It needs a base. It needs something to rest on. That's what that black was. Now I... I hear of all the political slants and that type of thing. I, you know, I'm not there with it. Still, when the Bahamian flag is hoisted each time, Bahamians are being encouraged to raise their heads in pride as a privileged people. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News.
Thanks so much, caller. United States President Barack Obama and the people of the United States wishing the Bahamas a happy 42nd Independence Anniversary. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said in a statement that the Bahamas is a trusted partner and friend and our country's abundant natural beauty is why Americans such as Ernest Hemingway and Martin, Martha Luther King Jr. flock to our shores. He congratulated the Bahamas on its successful CARICOM chairmanship as he says we have helped invest in our collective citizen security energy diversification and youth development. The statement concluded that the United States is a committed partner in working to build a safer and more prosperous Bahamas. Well, Family Alley News is next. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. Island living is to some nothing more than a dream. And in years past, so was the prospect of combining the trappings of modern life with a remote tropical setting. But that has changed, and a trip to the Berry Islands proved it, as Keisha Adley found out in tonight's BTC Island Connection. Hello there. Chance of love. Hello. <laughs> You may attach a new meaning to the term a dog's life after meeting these two Yorkshire Terriers. They've been vacationing in the Barry Islands with their owner, Graham Lewis. It may be hard to stay focused on business with scenery like this, but it's a must for the semi-retired businessman. Now with solid email contact, you can actually do business while you're away. So quite a few people don't worry about coming over here because now they can actually continue mm -hmm. to do perhaps a certain amount of business and stay in touch with their business at, business back home. Business as usual. Almost business as usual. On a yacht. On a yacht. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so. It's that level of assurance that keeps customers coming back to the 68th slip Great Harbor Key Marina where Hans Feblis is island manager. One of the first questions that we're asked when they make a reservation is whether we have Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and if it's strong and if it works fast. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and when they pull in, uh, the second question is, what's your Wi-Fi code? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not, where can I get some good Kong salad or where can I get a drink? It's, that's been replaced with, where can I get some Wi-Fi? Nowadays, nowadays uh, Wi-Fi is, is on top of the list. And here's another part of Lewis Bahamas checklist. I usually have a Bahamian cell phone and I connect with the, um, on the BTC to get weather. Or when I come into a marina, it's much better because you've got Wi-Fi and then you can send your pictures and do all the rest of it and stay in touch with friends and family and email. So the dog days of summer in the Berry Islands may be hot, but they never include being out of touch. Keishla Adderley for the BTC Island Connection.